From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Ropecast. I'm Roger Charlton, and sitting with me in the studio is Peter Tischer. Hello. Hi, Peter. You really threw me uh, recently when we were talking about quotations. Because uh-huh. you came up with something which you said was a quotation from Winston Churchill. I didn't recognize it. Uh, you mean the no sports thing? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we've done some checking. And I am more doubtful than ever that Churchill actually said or wrote that. But this is... Practically everybody knows this one. In Germany they do. You're kidding. <laughs> yes. We found only German references to this no sports So that uh-huh. is one thing that makes me think, Ooh, is this really a quotation or is this something that Germans think is a quotation from okay. Winston Churchill? Well, but maybe the British don't care about it. Well, there's a bit more evidence as well to support my idea that this may not be a real quotation. What else? Because Churchill was a sportsman. He did quite a lot of sport in his life. Mm-hmm. Maybe not at the end. You know, okay. He became a little overweight and that kind of thing. Well, maybe he said it at the end of his life. The other thing uh-huh. that finally convinces me that it is not a Churchill quotation is you said no sports. Right. That's American. Winston Churchill, of all people, would have said, if he said it at all, no sport. Uh-huh. Okay, that that does sound convincing. <laughs> Have I persuaded you? Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, so the no sports thing as a means to leading a healthy life is a joke that was put into the mouth of a British politician By the German public? By German journalists? I suppose something of this kind must have happened. Uh Uh-huh. Weird. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but the two languages, I mean, the no sports, no sport thing, that does sound convincing. He probably would not have said no sports. I never gave it any thought. But it reminds me, George Bernard Shaw Mm -hmm. is supposed to have said at some stage, although there's nothing written down, Mm -hmm. the Americans and the British are two nations... Divided by a common language. (laughs) That is probably true. Um, Speaking of Americans, I would have to do some correcting as well. Right. Uh, Remember the quiz we did on quotations where you quizzed me? And you started off with a very famous quotation, Yes, we can. Yes. And you thought it was this man. For when we have faced down impossible odds, when we've been told we're not ready, or that we shouldn't try, or that we can't. Generations of Americans have responded with a simple creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. That, of course, was Barack Obama. And he said it. Uh, He said it, but it was not originally him. He Uh was not the origin of that quote. Listen to this. Recognize that? I certainly do. That is Bob the Builder, of course. And Bob the Builder, for those who don't know, for those who don't have kids, is a stop-motion animated series. So something like Wallace and Gromit, where this little builder builds everything, repairs everything. And the slogan is, of course, can we fix it? Yes, we can. Yes. And I am almost dead certain that Barack Obama said to himself, yeah, well, that sounds good. I can apply that to American politics. But it's actually a British quotation from a children's series. But I think it's only getting into the collections of quotations because of President Obama. I don't think it would be there in a collection if it Uh were just part of an animated film. Okay. Which goes to show you, probably, that you ought to have to play a certain role in the public, to be important, to be a person who is really, really known by everyone, not just by kids, in order to sort of become famous with a quotation. Also, probably if you're a real person rather than a cartoon character. (laughs) <laughs> right, I guess that helps. Although there will be those quotations famous from cartoon characters, like That's All Folks, which yes. is Bugs Bunny. Right. But I would like to cap this one off here with something more serious. 
Uh, remember the quotation we had last time, not waving but drowning? Yes. And I think we said we owe our listeners a poem here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a famous poem, you said? Yes, it's by, as I said, Stevie Smith, an English author. And it's a very short poem, so if I may, I'll read it. Ah, uh, you have it with you? I have it right here on screen. Okay, go ahead. So it's called, Not Waving But Drowning. Nobody heard him, the dead man, but still he lay moaning. I was much further out than you thought, and not waving but drowning. Poor chap. He always loved larking, and now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him. His heart gave way, they said. Oh, no, no, no. It was too cold always. Still the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far out all my life, and not waving, but drowning. It's kind of sad. It is. It's it su suggests that, for her at least, life was sometimes too much. Uh -huh. People around her thought she was enjoying waving herself. Waving happily. A successful author, and so on and so forth. But she herself felt overwhelmed, uh -huh. as if by water. And was, in not in the literal sense, of course, drowning. Yes. I think we'll leave our listeners on that rather serious note. Yeah, and we'll come back next time with something more cheerful. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.